Hey guys, Andy coming to you here from a extremely wet and stormy Sunday morning um, and I'm here to bring you part five of our Eldred Omens painting tutorial series. This one is going to be on one of the new beautiful Plastic Chaos Chosen. Um, the options in this kit were stellar. It was extremely difficult to pick out which parts I wanted to use. Um, in the end I went for aesthetics over gameplay. Personally, I didn't look up the rules a lot. I just picked that sort of looked cool, that act looked cool. Uh, made sure it was legal, of course. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to pick the model I wanted to paint as well. In the end, I went for a nice open pose and used that beautiful power fist with the gnarly demon mouth in the palm. Um, so sit back and enjoy, and uh, let's see if we can bash this model out. Okay, so let's begin. So we have our miniature that we have primed all over with Chaos Black and then given a zenithal spray, a heavy zenithal spray of Lead Belcher. Um, so all the darkest recesses will stay black, but all of the, the uh, upper parts of the miniature will be shiny silver. We then move on to Leviathan Blue Contrast. And we apply this all over the flat parts of the armor. See, anywhere that isn't trim. Now at this stage, you can of course hit any other part that you like. You don't have to be super careful or neat or anything like that. Every other part will get painted over with something else. Um, but just to give you an idea of where trim is, it's a nice idea to be as neat as you can. On this miniature, there's loads of different armor panels. They're all separated, so uh, just take your time, have a good look at the miniature, and uh, try and find all of the armor panels that should be Leviathan Blue. We then move over to Retributor Armor Gold, and then we are going to find every single trim piece on this miniature and do it in gold. This is by far the slowest and most tedious part of the process. There is so many little trim pieces, basically in between um, every armor panel is trimmed out. And these Chaos guys may be evil, but they are also quite vain and have some quite pretty armor. So uh, yeah, like I said in the previous step, take your time. Even me doing this for a video, taking my time, missed a part on the back of his legs and had to go back and redo it with gold later on. Um, so yeah. So here it looks with all of the trim gold. You can see the absolute amount of it. Next, we're going to move on to Rhinox Hide. I'm going to quickly use this to base coat any of the leather parts or the flayed skin that's on the uh, the front part of his armor. It's going to give that a coat of Rhinox Hide. Obviously, his holster that holds his, pi his pistol will also get a coat of Rhinox Hide. I'm quite looking forward to getting the other four members of this squad all painted up and seeing what a full squad of Night Lords Chosen looks like on the tabletop. I feel they're going to look pretty cool. Next we're going to move on to Abaddon Black. And there's a couple of trim pieces around as like the casing of his gun. And a few other bits and pieces like that. Not too much on this miniature to be fair. Um, they just need to quickly um, get a coat of black on before we throw the shade on. Blood Angels Red will be used uh, just to base coat the pistol grip or the grip on the knife. I did this on the War Smith that I painted in the previous video for the handle of his hammer. So just to tie in um, details across armies so obviously this is going to be a full Night Lord's army, so all of the uh, basically weapon handles will be that Blood Angels Red. Okay, so that is all of the base coats on the miniature. It is time to give it an all-over shade of Colia Green Shade. I know you guys are freaked out by this. It's quite a bizarre shade to use um, at this stage, but just trust my madness and follow through. And I, I hope that you do enjoy the results at the end. I certainly do. Definitely gives that like midnight clad tint to uh, all the recesses of the miniature. Um, very Night Lords y feel. And obviously, we'll be layering up these panels later on, so we'll bring up a lot of color back into them. But this is just to tie them all together and protect the contrast paint job as well. I always find an all over shade acts as like a protective layer for the contrast. Contrast when it dries isn't as solid or sturdy as you know the base paints and the layer paints, so it does have the tendency to kind of rub off or get chipped off. So just be careful with that. Making sure to get the shade into all the nooks and crannies. When you have done that, it should look something like this. 
from this. We're going to wait for this to dry. And while it is drying, I'm going to say a few things. Okay, guys, while that shade is drying, I thought I'd take this opportunity to chat to you a little bit. So first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to all you guys who've supported me so far on the 365 project. For anyone who doesn't know what the 365 project is, it is me, Andy, with the brand Mediocre Hobbies going full time into social media and YouTube across this year. All I can say is we're about two weeks into the project um, and our subscriber count has gone from the low 3000s to mid 7000 in two weeks. That is not possible without you guys. I just want to say a huge thank you for that. Um, if you guys haven't already joined the 365 project, it's very simple. Just subscribe to the channel, like the videos that come out and give them a watch. That will help me out immensely. If you see real value in what I do and you learn something from it and you want to support me even more, there's links below to my uh, Patreon. Um, you can get involved that way. I would love to have you as the newest member of the community. And yeah, I just honestly can't thank you guys enough. So. Keep it up, keep watching, keep liking, commenting, and subscribing, and let's get back to the video. Okay, I'm sure you guys have noticed a pattern now. While I wait for my shades to dry, I get the miniature based up. This just helps with the final aesthetic of the model. As we're doing the layering process, we're getting closer and closer and closer to the model looking finished. Um, and that definitely helped by the base. And we're now going to move on to Night Lord's Blue. And we're going to bring back up the color in the uh, power armor. This is quite a dark blue. It doesn't show up the very best on camera, but it does make a difference. It does definitely give it that Night Lordsy blue feeling. There's an example of one panel done next to all the rest that haven't been done. It jumps out quite a lot. And this is what it's looked like when you do the Night Lords blue on all of the armor panels. Obviously the color of the green shade isn't staining the blue armor anymore or anything like that. It's just tinting all of that lovely gold. Speaking of gold, the gold is very imperial gold right now, quite bright and gaudy. So now we're going to push it more to like a bronze cop uh, texture. So we're going to use lead belcher for this. Uh, we are going to layer up the gold. Um, not like heavy layering, not trying to hit every nook and cranny or anything like that. It's just a few select um, spots, corners and stuff like that. As you can see, I'm just kind of dabbing the silver along different points. There's no real rhyme or reason to it, but it definitely changes how the gold and silver uh, looks in your mind. Touching up that gnarly blade, his skinning knife. No, Night Lord will leave home without a skinning knife. So here's me going in at that skull, as you can see once again, just dotting. And it's not turning the gold silver, it's just making it look a little bit more kind of brassy, old and tarnished. Remember, some suits of Chaos Space Marine armor can be upwards of 10,000 years old. They may uh, take care of them as best they can, but uh, they're not going to be in the best of condition. So an example of how the skull looks next to the bottom part of it. That gaudy gold next to the... Uh, bright and shiny gold look at the detail in this miniature in just that single shoulder pad absolutely insane we're going to need to keep that blank shoulder pad there for later on Jumping over to Ronix Hide now, and this is just to layer up the parts that we did um, brown earlier on. So the holster for his pistol. And that skin that we're going to add a little bit of flesh color to in a minute and make it look like fresh flayed skin. Like I said, these aren't really very predominant features on the miniature. They're dark color, it's just a bit of brown leather. You don't have to go over the top when people pick up the miniature they're not going to be looking at those details okay on to a bit of cadian flesh tone we're just gonna roughly highlight that tattered piece of flayed skin um, that he's using for his tabard downward strokes little lines that don't have to connect crazily 
But this is a Night Lord chosen in the heat of battle. So this skin will be quite fresh. I know it looks a little silly right now, but uh, we're going to hit it with a coat of Blood for the Blood God in a minute, which will make all the difference. Okay, now it's time to do the lightning effect. So I only pretty much learned how to do this lightning effect about two weeks ago, and I've been getting uh, a little bit better with it each time. So I start with a coat of Ulflan Grey, very thin brush, and all you want to do is make lightning patterns on the armor. Now I know that sounds like an easy enough thing to do, but it's not as easy as you think. The first few times I tried it, I ended up looking like a tree or anything like this. I find the trick is not to have too many offshoots from the lightning. Basically pick a starting point and draw a squiggly line down as long as you want it to go. And then one or two offshoots is enough. So see how the power fist there, it's so one squiggly line goes down and then it just has one offshoot and it looks like lightning. After you've got all of your Ulthan Grey bits done, you move over to Talazar Blue Contrast, which is a shiny blue color, and you paint over the Ulthan Grey bits. Now, what you want to do is go a little bit over the white line, so it looks like that it's glowing on either side. So let's see, this is a fatter brush, and I'm not being careful to just hit the blue, so it will stain a little bit on either side of the lightning and make it look like glow. Next, we're going to have the Blood for the Blood guy I mentioned that we're going to use to uh, make the flayed skin look horrible. A thin coat of this will do. It will dry a bit darker than this, it's a bit shiny. Maybe I should have been less careful uh, going around the skinning knife. Maybe that should have had a little bit of blood on it, but. I'd imagine he takes quite good care of things like his skinning knife. It's like a weapon of honor for a night lord. And with that, the miniature is complete, and it's time for the grand reveal.